Hello there everybody, good day to you and welcome back. Glad you guys are here. This is a 1999 Ford F250 with Triton, I think it's a 5.4 3-valve V8. Customer stays, vehicle makes horrendous suspension squeaking noises while driving. So let's get straight to it. Let's hop on in, fire this thing up, get it out on the road, listen for the suspension squeaking noises, and then we will go from there. So. Stay tuned because this is going to be a very good video. Opening Z hood. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look who that guy is. All right, let's get this thing fired up and out on the road here. Beginning engine starting sequence now. All right, nice good start. See what our mileage says on our odometer. That's gonna be a negatory. Infinite mileage. It does not have mileage because I cannot see what the odometer says. We'll probably have to uh, pull that up with a scan tool or something. All right, let's get this thing in gear. We'll pull it out. We'll drive around some, see if we can't replicate some suspension noises, and then uh, we'll bring her on into the shop, get it up on the rack, and take a look down below. I already hear something. So we definitely heard some squeaky squeak action. I'm fairly confident that it is in fact coming from the front lower suspension, uh, possibly ball joints, uh, could be control arms, some bushings, uh, a visual inspection uh, should uh, clear that thing up or clear that uh, matter up with relative ease. Observation numero dos, and you guys can't feel it, but I can. The climate control system uh, in this particular F-150, F-250, is uh, vastly underperforming. Uh, that thing uh, should also require some diagnosing. Maybe it's just low in refrigerant, maybe the system doesn't work, who knows, but we're gonna find out. Now, over here on the floor, I'm seeing some brake pads and looks like uh, one singular brake rotor. So we have one rotor and uh, looks like front and rear pads. So uh, I, guess we're, I guess we're doing a brake job on this thing too later on. Um, it's not on my list right here, but uh, We'll take a look at those uh, friction material components below also when we get this up on the rack. So let's finish our test drive, get this unit up and over the bridge. We're off, we got a break in traffic. We'll swing back to the shop, get her on the lift, and then get started. Oh, there's that check engine light. See right there? We have an issue. This window is kind of dirty. Let's see if we have any spray. Ah, uh, we do have spray. Ah, it's coming in. Uh, it's still kind of dirty but better all righty we are approaching the shop space going under the bridge and over the tracks let's take one more listen for some noises going over these bumps right here noises all righty let's get this unit up in the air and see what ails her from down below hard left clearing the doors of death we're good here we're good. All right, this is looking good. Center of gravity at the driver, both sides. Parking the auto. Pew. Firing down. Let's hop on out. Popping, that's not the hood, that's the brake. We'll pop the hood. See what's going on down below the bonnet. Lift her up, pull the wheels, and inspect our undercarriage and braking system. All righty then, we've got the rack set up in the appropriate positions. Let's raise this thing up in the air. Green subscribe button. Moving on up, let's go ahead and get the wheels unbolted and we can visually inspect our undercarriage. Looks like we've got some spline drive. Locking lug nuts, see those guys right there? I'm going to have to uh, get a special tool to take those guys off. Let's see here, I believe I've got them. Um, there it is, the master lug nut set. Let's see what we've got now. Survey says the big one. Big spline drive, yeah, bird. Got it. First try. Switching out to impact gun cam. What? 
Get on there. It's a delicate harmony and symphony of motion. Let's get the left front removed. Customer had said something about uh, a bunch of grooves or some irregular looking wear on one of the rotors. I'm assuming that's why there is one brake rotor. Grab a toss. One brake rotor in the car. Don't know about the pads yet. We're gonna find out. Dropping my nuts. There's nuts rolling around everywhere. There we go, stay. Oh, this is the seven lug nut Ford. That's what's going on here. I was wondering why my flanges were experiencing extra fatigue. And turns out this is that weird goofball truck that has the seven front lug nuts, or the seven lug nuts and not the six or the eight. Okay. Okay, right front wheel. I'll check these out. They're directional off-road tires. See the V-shaped groove in them right there? V-shaped, directionals. Not rotationals. People call them rotational and that's not the correct terminology, it is directional. But regardless of whatever anal it is, it's got seven nuts on each side. This is a decent looking rotor up here. Pads are showing a little bit of wear. Maybe 60% wear, okay. There is a defect, nasty bushing, another nasty bushing. How about our sway bars? That's okay. I think these are our squeakers right here, these ball joints. All right. That's what it sounded like. Other side, this is the one the guy had mentioned with the groove worn into it. See that groove? I think that's why we want to replace this rotor. Okay. All righty. And... Same thing on these control arm bushings here. I think we need a set of control arms on it and probably ball joints. Let's get, let's look past this little dust boot business here. Oh yeah, look at that. That is annihilated. There is no dust boot and that is a dry ball. We do not want dry balls on our Fords. Okay, right, let's do the same thing to this upper ball here and see if this one has lubrication. We may have a another dry ball on this side. Bear with me. Oh yeah, she's nasty in there. You guys see that? Yeah, that's not looking good. No dust boot, no lubrication, and there's also no grease fitting, no grease cert here, so you can't even grease these guys. Too bad though. I bet a, a greasable joint would have prevented that long term. It would have done a better job for the remainder of its life, which is now over with. So I'm gonna recommend uh, lower ball joints on this truck. We're going to recommend upper control arms on this truck. And we gotta diagnose the AC, and then uh, I guess we can go from there. All righty, X amount of time has passed and we have authorization to proceed with some repairs. Uh, so it's time to get started, whoa. We're going to take care of all of this front end stuff going on with this truck. So we're basically gonna do a front end rebuild. It's going to get a boatload of fluid services, including a transmission filter. And then later on, we're gonna pop the diff cover off and take a look at the differential. So I'm gonna start with our axle nut, obviously. We need a 36 millimeter with some nut busting reverse torques. That wasn't very tight, but okay. Let's see if that axle is going to break free from the hub here. Let's take a punch on it and a hammer. Yep, axle's loose, this is good. So, let's go ahead and punch gravity. Oh wow, look at that, I didn't even notice this. This one's way worse than the other side. Watch this right here. Look at how much play is in that upper ball joint. Das ist nicht gut, nein. All right, let's pull this ball joint loose. We're gonna start pulling the control arms, then the steering knuckle is gonna be loose. We can disconnect the brake hardware, hang up the caliper, remove the rotor, pull the lower ball joint out of it, 
disconnect the knuckle if we have to, and then we'll press that ball joint in and out. So we've got a, a lot of things to do. I'm gonna try to do this in some kind of an order here so it, uh, it becomes streamlined and easy. Mr. Dave is at lunch, but when he returns, I think I'll get him working on the other side and we can just tag team this unit and get her done ASAP. But first I need to get these cotter pins out of the hole here. There we go. Get at it from the back side. Come here, pin. I'll show you. That's not gonna work. This will, I'll drive it out with a punch. Aha. Got it, mostly. Back in with the needle noses and grab it and twist using leverage. Looking for a ratcheting 21. Let's get this nut loose. Unpackage. Spin this guy out. And smack that with a hammer a couple times and it should pop that ball joint stud loose and free. If it doesn't, I may have to use a puller. Try this the uh, the easy way first. See that? Came loose. Kapuya. Okay, that's out. Now, up top, we need to pull these uh, upper control arm bolts out and then remove the entire upper. Twenty one socket coming in. Unclick, fail. Need to hold it on the other side. The, the bolt is turning here. Now these uh, have eccentric cams designed to allow for wheel alignment once the new parts are installed. So I'm gonna have to take this thing down to the uh, alignment shop and let them set up the geometric suspension alignment. Actually, there are no cams in there. Look, that's just a regular washer. It appears that that bracket is just slotted to allow for motion. See right here? See that slot? That allows us to slide this control arm either forward or backwards. And that changes the position of the upper ball joint, thus changing our camber and caster angles on the steering knuckle and the wheels. And now you know. Let's come out of this corner and move on over here to this corner. We'll repeat on this bolt right here in the back. Okay, 21 coming in. That's not gonna fit. Let's try this side. Delivery! Okay, I return. I was receiving some pots. Rapid unclickages. Here, let me get that. I'm saving this stuff for later because I don't think my control arms will be coming with fasteners. So, we're saving these. Wiggle that guy out. That's our bolt. And our control arm should be free. There she is. Oh, yeah, the dirt falling out of that. One crustomatic. Super junk control arm, and look at that ball joint. That is not okay. All right. Well, now that we have that thing removed, we can uh, we can hang our hook here, and that's going to be for our brake caliper and bracket. We need to remove that. That way, I can uh, begin to remove the steering knuckle. And coming up from the bottom, let's get those uh, caliper bracket bolts disconnected. There's that one there. Uno mas. That one almost didn't uh, didn't come out. I had to approach it at that kind of goofy weird angle. Regardless, caliper's loose. So we're gonna peel this guy back and then we're gonna hang it up on our little red hook. Let's see here, we'll just kind of slip that in 
just like so. Very nice. So now the caliper weight is not going to be dangling off the ABS wire or the brake fluid hose, which is good. So let's come on over. We're going to knock loose looks like the uh, the front tie rod here. Let's get that off just for ease of mobility. And then we can uh, work on the ball for the lower ball joint and break that thing loose. This cotter pin will suffer a similar fate as its counterparts. It's coming out and getting thrown away because it's junk. Stop calling people's cars junk. I get those comments sometimes. I call something that is junk actual junk. And then people are like, you can't call people's stuff junk. It's not their fault. Well, it is sometimes. It is your fault. If it's junk and you let it get junk, that's your fault. Dave's laughing over there. Right, Dave? Yeah. I mean, you can have not brand new things and just don't let it turn to garbage and then it won't be junk. But if you let your things turn to garbage, that's on you. You know, cleaning is free not neglecting things is also free now that stuff costs money so if you have junk that's your fault so what i'm doing i see how i flip that castle nut around I flipped it around and i'm going to thread this back on to that tie rod like so because then i can knock it loose with a hammer They don't always come off that easily. But when they do, I appreciate it. Pull that guy out. That's not looking the greatest either. Yeah, that, that tie rod end is also a joke. I'm gonna have to replace those two. Okay. So I realize we've spent a lot of time in this video staring at balls and uh, twisting cotter pins around and we're almost done with the balls and cotter pins on this side. Dave's handling the balls on the other side so we don't have to. He's trying as hard as he can to not laugh right now. My crude immature humor is wearing thin on the man. There we go. Okay, let's get the 24 on this one. That was easy. Good. And I think we're going to need a puller on this rear, but I'm going to give it one good shot with a hammer real quick. This is not to keep the threads from being damaged. This is to prevent the entire knuckle from falling off of the lower control arm. Yeah. Give this a couple of hits, see what happens. Nope, need a puller. All right, let's see what this thing does. This is an OTC, or no, it's an OEM tools. Uh, part number 25219, that right there. Somebody uh, sent me this unit. If it uh, does this job, oh, look at that. This puller is so good. I didn't even have to put force on it. That was fantastic. What a great puller. You guys should use the Amazon link down below to buy one of these. It works like that every time. That was fantastic. Anyways, anyway, um, I'm ahead of myself. I need to actually disconnect my uh, wheel speed sensor from up here. Because if I attempt to remove this without doing that, I'm going to break it. So let us backtrack some and do some electrical disassembly. Looks like we've got just like an eight millimeter bolt right here. And then whatever holds that sensor in, I think it's a torx bit right down there. Here, let's get out of this little corner and we'll get this backing plate disconnected. A series of eight millimeter fasteners. As long as they don't break off in the knuckle, we're good, I think. That kind of thing happens. Wiggle that in. Wiggle it out. And then there's one more down below. Okay, wheel speed sensor fastener. 
it's all rusted out. Are you gonna come out or are you not? Smooth like butter. Okay, let's take some needle nose vice grips here and just get a good solid grip on that sensor without crushing it. And we're gonna just kind of wiggle and pull. Here we go. Once we get past the tension on that O-ring, it pops right out. So we've got one more eight right here on that bracket. And then we can pull this knuckle off of here. It's the return of the Ocho. The eight millimeter. Come out, there we go. Beautiful, okay, so now everything is disconnected from our steering knuckle. We need to push the axle out of it and then lower it down and that will fully expose the ball joint. Some folks will try to do this without taking everything apart and I think that's foolish because this gets very heavy. There we go. Okay, we are removed, disconnected, knuckle is in hand. Let's set this guy down. So looking at the top of the ball joint here, we can see there's a bunch of impacted and crusted in dirt. We're gonna wire brush that away and expose the rust contained within. And then I can uh, go after that snap ring right there, get that thing removed, and then we'll press this joint out of the lower control arm. Okay, snap ring pliers coming in. These are actually reversible. You can either pull the snap ring or you switch positions, then it will push. So they're good for inside snap rings and outside snap rings. Fun fact. Anyway, we get that guy down the hole, give it a squeeze, safety squints, and there is our snap ring unit. One more time with the wire brush here. That way when we do the press, we don't inadvertently press a bunch of dirt into the bore and uh, cause some binding problems. That's not okay. A bunch of it in the groove there. Let's uh, dig that out. Good. Nice and not really shiny, but it's better than it was. Let us begin the lubrication procedure. Let that soak in there nice and deep like. Alrighty, let's get this crusty ball joint out of here. Wow, that's, that's so bad, look at that. Flippy floppity balls. Okay, so what we've got, we've got a hollow cylinder and a stoppage plate at the bottom. We're gonna take the big C-clamp press and we're going to set this up on the bottom of the unit here. And then tighten down the shaft. What that's going to do as we tighten this shaft right here, it's gonna put downward pressure on that ball joint body and it's going to press it out of the control arm and into this little cylinder device here. Let's get this lined up a little bit better and centered properly. Because if we press it sideways, it won't come out. We'll set her up like right there. I think that's good. Nope, still off center. How about, how about there? There we go. Okay, so now we just have to put this thing with an impact gun. It's gonna extend the shaft, push the ball joint out of the control arm, and then all we've gotta do is grab the new one, flip it around, press the new one in, and then we can reassemble this side. Hey, Dave just found something cool. It looks like the wheel fell off of this truck while it was driving once. Look at this over here. Never saw this. There's our ball joint. You guys may have seen this, but I didn't. But look, that's like ground off from when it fell and hit the ground and it was rolling or sliding or dragging. Yeah, that is a ground away fastener. It's not okay. 
Yeah, it'll unthread though. You just hammer a socket onto it and send it. It'll go. What do you think? Might come off easier, actually. It might. There's nothing holding it on. It's got like three <laughs> threads left. Yeah, just send it. Hey, worst case scenario, we chop it off with the saws all right. We have the power of destruction. Anyway, let's get to impacting on our balls. Joint. 22 millimeters coming in. Beginning tightening sequence now. Watch right here. Alrighty, I believe I'm making an error. I do believe that this right here is part of the factory ball joint. So I'm effectively just pressing against the ball joint. So I need to redo everything I've just done here. Unclickage. Yeah, that's uh, I did it wrong. That's fine. Okay, so this is the biggest cone that I have and it barely doesn't fit. We have to hammer it on. There. That's better. Let's try this again. So, we'll thread this guy back down once more. Get it lined up again. Now let's try it. Full send. Partial send. All right, let's back this thing off and out. And there we go. It is free. So now we need to just clean up that hole a little bit and prep the area for the new ball joint. No, seriously, we gotta clean it out. Remove the dust and dirts and debris. That way we don't uh, press them into that borehole and cause a binding condition. That would be bad. There we go. Nice and shiny-ish. Okie dokie, here's our new ball joint. It uh, is greasable, unlike the factory one. You see the splines here, so that can grip into that bore on the control arm. And we've got a functioning dust boot and a very large nut for the bottom. Now, we're gonna have to press this in in a similar fashion how we press that one out. We can see that the rubber is encroaching on the area where we would have to press from. So I'm going to remove this rubber boot and then press against the housing body right here to push this into position. At least that's what I intend to do. And I'm gonna do that without tearing this, uh, this rubber piece. Or I'm not going to do it that way because I can't get this rubber to come off without damage. Maybe I can. Oh yeah, here it comes. I think it's got some metal impregnated into the rubber. That's why that was so tough, yeah. Feel that? It's not, it's not soft and squishy. So we can see our ball joint right here. It's got grease inside of it. We're going to press against this area right here, that little flange. So I need to find something to press against this. Okay, so what we need to do is take this ball joint and realize that it is the wrong one and doesn't fit. Cut! Alright, well, seeing as how we don't have any blower uh, ball joints, might as well go ahead and get these control arms set up because I'm out of parts. Uh, Dave ran off to the parts house to go and grab the correct lower ball joints. Well, actually, he took one of the old lowers and brought that with him. Uh, the issue is, is the parts store says that this one that looks like this is not the right one. It says this is for a two-wheel drive, and clearly this is a four-wheel drive truck. So something's going on with the part numbers. It's whatever. 
no worries, we will move on and continue. So just like the reverse of taking these out, or it is the reverse, the inverse rather. We're gonna go ahead and just put this right back in. Got a nut and a washer, not in that order. And then on the back side, similar. Slide that guy through. And our nut and our washer. There's about right. Okay, so using the witness marks on where I think this is supposed to go, we're gonna eyeball this and line it up as best as possible. And I believe right about there is where I found the originals. I'm also gonna angle this upward ever so slightly. I'm not going to apply full torque on this, but I do wanna get it tight enough where it'll kinda of keep its position. That way it's close for when the alignment guys have to make the adjustments. And also to not tax the, uh, the bushings. Click, there we go. And then uh, one more over here on the back side right there. And that's looking pretty close according to the witness marks we can see right here where the old bushings were touching the metal. So we're gonna just try to line that up right where it is. There we go. That's one side. I guess uh, we need to go over to the other side and we'll get that one set up as well. So let us uh, circumnavigate our Ford over here. And then we can put this other upper control arm in position. I hope Dave doesn't mind. This is his side, not mine, but he's not here right now. Dave's not here, man. Okay, arm coming in, just like the other side. And unlike the other side, this, this one's a little stiff. Hmm, no matter, hammers, hammers are good. Just tap it on in there. There we go. Okay, so this back side's a little bit more loosey-goosey than the front. Pardon my noggin. Get in there, Bolt. There. So that's one bolt, one nut, one washer on the back side. Kind of a tight squeeze with these wires in here. Now I can kind of wiggle this around. Get some alignment going on this front side. See how I used the bolt as a pry bar? Clever, no? I think it was. My washer fell, no! Repeat. There we go. It's two bolts. So let's see here, we'll come in from the bottom. Lining up the witness marks holding it relatively level-ish as per my guesstimation of where it should go. And then we'll sneak the tool in in front. Slippage. Clickage, there we go. And then the one on the back over here. Sneak that right down in there. Good. Okay, that guy is in position, waiting on our ball joints. Well, I still don't have any ball joints yet, so let's continue disassembling. I'm gonna pull these uh, outer tie rod assemblies out, and we're gonna change these with some some new ones as well, because the ball joints or the ball and socket joints, rather, uh, in the tie rods were remarkably crustomatic, and they're not in good shape. And I'd hate to do a, a halfway kind of repair and not address. Uh, these other safety items, so these ball joints are also going away. If I can manage to dig this cotter pin out, it's stuck. Oh, give us some wiggle action, and then we will apply some leverages here. Twist and pull, and pull and twist. 
you. We'll just up the ante a little bit with some side cuts. Leverage. Booyah. So now we need a 21. Crack this guy loose. Oh, that's tight. That's very tight. Okay. That's cool. No worries. Yeah, no worries. We'll cheat the wrench and add another wrench. What we're gonna do is uh, compound wrenches. So we'll take this one, put it on the open end of the other one. Now we've doubled the length of our lever and crack it loose. Beautiful. Now she's loose. We'll swap it out to a ratcheting unit. Take the castle nut off and we'll pop that guy out of there. I wonder if I can use that handy dandy little press device on this one. My OEM tools one that I didn't really get to use on the ball joint separation. We'll try it in a moment. Running out of threads. Come on with it. Give it back to me. Oh, we're stuck. Stuck on stupid. Look at that. There we go. And yeah, I do realize I could probably get more space out of this if I went up into the cabin and just turned the steering wheel, but. But those of you who have been around a while know I like to do things like the hard way first. It's just in my nature. Anyway, let's get our little puller device in here. Tighten that unit down. This should make light work of this. Unfortunately, it presses that way. See that? It presses from that way and not from the other way. So I'll have to get in there with my angular impact yet again. 90 degree coming in. We're going down. And we're gonna make some contact with our tool. Go ahead and send it. in there look at that press in there that is flipping tight right there i can't get that any tighter with uh, the impact i'm gonna switch that out to a ratchet and put some more pressure on it actually you know what where's my where's my hammer real quick hang on let's just try something here Ooh, got it it was not violent but it could have been okay so that one's out junk Fetch my tooling action here. Ooh, that thing is hot, 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 hot. That's uh, super duper hot. Muy caliente in Espanol. Alrighty, now that that tie rod is out, we can go ahead and get the new one in. It's an assembly. I ended up buying the inners, the outers, uh, and the adjusting sleeve because that makes life easy. It's never good to have to take the adjuster sleeve and the jam nuts off the old units and then swap over to new units. It's just, it's a lot of extra work. So I routinely will replace the adjusters with tie rods. It's just good practice, is how it's done. And anybody who works in the industry knows it's remarkably annoying when you get a job to change tie rods and you've got to take them apart just to uh, get the jam nuts. Dave, you're supposed to say loud noises first. All right. Ah. Whoa. 
Oh, <laughs> I almost fell over. That was awesome. Put that guy on. Let's find. All right, there's the hole for the cotter key, cotter pin, split pin. Call it what you want. The pin. Let's just get everybody nice and lined up. A little bit more turn on it. We're good here. And kick it. That should be it. Looking good. Okay. All righty. Pin coming in. We'll drop that down. Okay. Pin coming in. Drop that down through the hole. It's in position. Now. We will secure it for all eternity. Bend it that way. And I'll bend it this way. Doing it wrong. Whee! There we go. Okay. Tie rods are in. Let's get back to work on this ball joint down here. Alright, let us try these ball joints again. Now these ones have this uh, that face on them, that big lip. So I won't have to remove the boot. This is actually the third set. And I believe these are gonna fit no problem. Now, we can see that this is going to protrude through the top of the control arm. So I need to take this little spacer here, which is, or has a diameter large enough to fit over that splined area. See that, how we're doing that? So what I need to do is, I'm going to gently take the hammer, try to run this up Ooh, grab a toss. Got to run this up just a little bit. It's not going to stay. I wanted, it, I wanted to get it to go in ever so slightly first, just to make it a little easier to uh, press that in position. But no matter, we'll get around it. Maybe not that one, okay? Because it's this one. That's gonna fit on that little flange. Then we're gonna take this cone, which is going to fit over our cylinder, and it has a hole to allow that unit to pass through. Like that, see? So then we can set our big clamp up and see how it's got the hole in the bottom of it. That's gonna fit down over that stud down below. We're about to have a massive gravity moment. There it is. Okay. Got it. Take 37. Let's try it one more time. Oh, he set you up through the hole, up and over. Screw it down. Continue screwing it down, making it centered. Okay. There we go. So now we're all lined up here. We've got space. I can feel the stud through the hole, so that's good. That's all in alignment. Let's get the gun and send it home real quick like here. See what she does. You gonna go in? Sure it is. Why wouldn't it? Loud noises. All right, we're flush right there. That is in position. Let's back off the gun. There we go. All right, that one's in, and I think Dave already did the other side. So now we need to snap ring this unit so it can't come back out. And we'll continue the reassembly. All right, let's move our shaft here. Got our snap ring, it's set up on the pliers already. We open it up, slide it over, get on there. Snap, okay, that unit is in position, good to go. Okay, in my right hand, I've got the castle nut for the ball joint. And in my left hand, I've got the steering knuckle. So we're gonna slide the shaft in, up and over the joint. Take the castle nut, get that thing threaded, get on there. And now, our steering knuckle is in position and it cannot come out. Um, you may need to turn the steering wheel your direction to get the tie rod out, and I do have 
a puller that will help you out, but I think you're gonna need some, some more space. So give me a second, I'll uh, let me get out of your way. Let's tighten up this lower nut real quick. Finish off this section of the operation. Click. Uh, a little more to line up the holes. And a little more to line up the holes. There we go, holes are now lined up. Good, and one more cotter key. This one will run through the back side here. Pull it through, index it, pull it all the way, give it the wrap around treatment here. Not the reach around, the wrap around. It's a different kind of treatment. Erico does the reach arounds. I'll do wrap arounds. All right, good to go. Hang on, Dave. I'm going to climb up there and hit the key. Uh, I'll turn the steering in your direction so you can have some access to uh, that tie rod over there, okay? All right. Climbing. Good. That might be fine. Just sticking out. Just falling out of the All righty, moving on up some. Let's go ahead and line this knuckle up with the upper ball joint. If it's gonna come down that far, I, I tightened it while it was up in the air and now it's kind of kind of hovering. I will pry bar it down, that'll work. More pry bar and it's the big one, the four footer. There goes the flashlight. I'm gonna pry this guy right down like so. Then I can come around with the castle nut on the back side. Get that thing threaded in, good to go. Clean. Incoming impact clickages. Am I going the right way? No, going the wrong way. Bad ray. Clicks. And we get another cotter key on this one back here. Run that guy right on through. Get in there. Flyer time. There she is. Bend her around. And bend that one around too. Again, we're not doing the reach around, we're doing the wrap around. Okay, so since that axle is now permanently affixed, we'll just go ahead and put the axle nut on and apply some torque action to this. Full send. Hmm. It's spinning when it shouldn't be spinning. It's hard to apply torque while it's rotating. There we go. Nice and tight like. I'll torque you later. So earlier we saw that they had one new rotor in the truck and I have convinced the owner to replace those rotors in pairs. So I ordered one and we're gonna use theirs. Uh, fortunately, I was able to find the same manufacturer as the one inside of the cabin. I don't like to cross manufacturers because you can get different levels of hardness and that's gonna give you different levels of friction and that will give you different levels of braking and that's not okay. You want evenness in your brakes. So anyway, that being said, let me polish this up real quick here. I need a new pad. And then uh, we'll throw the rotor on and then get the caliper on, then this side is good to go. There we go, new sanding pad. This uh, unit is from 3M also. If you guys want one, um, I'm not gonna Amazon link it, but uh, 3M sells these things, so just look on their website. There we go. Nice and shiny. And as for the voids in between, we'll use a pneumatic polishing wheel. It's loud noise this time. <laughs> Decrustified. Complete. More. Alright, 
That's better. Now we're good. But you know what? I, I've got to do it. I, I just have to do it. Shiny! Okie dokes, we have one brake rotor coming in. Let's de-oil it. They come with a coating of oil so they don't rust in storage. Give it the flip. There we go. That's pretty. Look, there's rust. The oil failed. Dave just saved the day. I completely got ahead of myself and did not install the backing plate. Uh, you guys probably already knew that, but I was uh, ahead of myself and I forgot. So I didn't do that. So uh, let's, yeah, let's get that backing plate installed. Thank you, Dave, for pointing out the error of my ways. Much appreciated. Yeah. That would have... Is there a uh, power pins? Um, yeah, they're over here on my box. And, and I, if we run out, I have a box, like a separate box of them. But I have all the packages with the pins over here. All right, Torx 30 coming in. That's for our wheel speed sensing unit. Switch that out to the eight millimeter. I'm gonna throw that backing plate back on. Right about like so. Let's get all these uh, bolts started first before we get them torqued. There we go. And number three down at the bottom. Good. Fix. There we go. Top one. Sweet. Now I can put my shiny new rotor back on. Hooray. And we're only going to do one shiny new rotor because the one that I ordered was not correct. Again. So let's turn this guy and circumnavigate one more time. You can fetch our caliper, get that guy hung up right over here. So I should have thought of this earlier, but I didn't. I, uh, I very much could have uh, pulled this all the way apart and separated the caliper from the bracket. I, I should have, because I have to do it now. But I didn't. Oh, the things that we would have done, or we could have done, or that we should have done. No matter. Okay, yeah, that is the bolts for the caliper bracket. Let's get this thing separated here. It's actually kind of stuck. There we go, got it. All right, there's our bracket. I'll put the caliper back where I found it for right now. I'm gonna hang you back up. And the pads are falling out. We have new pads on the floor. So we're gonna use those. Let's get these old ones out. Flip our bracket tree and start the bolts. Looking good. Wrong socket. Not looking good. Still wrong socket. Not looking good. Right socket, hooray! We've got the right stuff. Okay, let's get this unit tight. Clickage, twice clickages. Spin that guy around. And I've got one more fastener up here that I forgot. That's the bolt for the uh, wheel speed sensor connector wire. Tighten that guy down. Clicks. All right, let's hang the pads and get that caliper back together. This side will be good to go. Okay, let's get rid of these, uh, these old shims. We don't need these. Good. A little bit of wire brush action. Not for dust off. Tinky, tinky, tinky. Okay, bottom shim. That one's in. And the top shim. 
Snap that guy into place, good to go. Let's hang the pads. So, using old pads as a reference, this one has no indicator marks or no indicators. See a little wear indicator right there. This pad does not have that. And the two circles here indicate to me that this is the inboard pad because this one is contacting the pistons and the caliper. So we can dig one of the non-squealer indicators and that will be our inside. Slip this guy in, there we go. And then our outboard pad matches up with this one. So we slip this guy in. Push it in, there we go. All set. Now we must take our caliper, bring it on over, flip it, because I've got to compress the pistons. And I'll do that with my handy dandy caliper compressor tool. It's a ratcheting device, a simple unit. Here, we close it up some. It's got a forward threaded side and a reverse threaded side. We'll stick a brake pad in there for some space. Now, as we ratchet this unit, it's gonna push these pistons inward, compressing them and giving us the space to put the caliper over top of our fresh set of pads. Dave, am I okay to compress the uh, pistons on this caliper here? Uh, I'll just keep them out. I'm not pushing, yeah, I'm not pushing yours out, am I? No. I don't think so. That can happen. If you have both calipers removed and you push one side in, the hydraulic pressure can just go to the other caliper, push the pistons out, and then they fall on the ground. It's never okay. Slide pin grease coming in. Give that a bit of a squirt. And some more on this side, squirt, good to go. Take our slide pins and stick those back where they go. Nice. You guys thought I was gonna do that without greasing these up. I saw you. I saw the look in your eyes. So what we need to do here is make sure that this tab slips down into that little notch down there on that bracket. Not very easy to do. It's not wanting. Oh no, my pad fell out. That's it's not okay. Get in there, brake pad. That might have had something to do with why it didn't want to go. Uh, it's getting late in the day, guys. I'm running out of calories. My energy is falling. There. Down. Push the pin in on the top. Oh, I've got it bass backwards. Look. That's got a, a groove right here to hook into the caliper. Hang on. I'm doing it all wrong, Ray. Let me pry that slide pin out some. Slide pin's in the way. There we go. There, now we got it. Good. Okie dokie, two bolts coming in from the back side here. That one's not fitting so well. I don't want to put any force on it for fear of knocking the caliper loose, so I'll put that in the bottom. Bend that line some, there we go. Now it fits more better. -er. Sweet. Let's get some torque on these, ba these fasteners here and we're good here. Okay, back to our 90, back to our T45. That one's tight. That one doesn't have a straight line to reach the fastener. So back to the extension. There we go. Should have done that to begin with. Okay, that's on. Slide the boot over our bolt where it's supposed to be. Same thing on that bottom one. The bolts have a groove for the dust boots to ride onto. Slide you back. That's not working. Miniature fry driver. 
I'll get under it some and give it some stretch action. There, good to go. Okie dokes. We are nearly complete with this side. One more time around the corner. Let's get that tie rod in position. And with the exception of some grease, we are done here. Which is cool, because it's the end of the day and the sun is super long because of that uh, little bit of a time change business that we keep indulging in as a society. I'm not a huge fan of switching our clocks at random. I don't care if it's dark outside in the morning that's called normal. We should be indulging the normal, trying to change it to suit ourselves. Yeah, I know, here I go with that common sense business again. Gotta quit doing that. If the Matrix finds out, they'll send the agents. Okay, that one's good. One more Connor pin and we're good to go over there. So I, uh, we're not gonna get the other side done actually. Um, like I said, theme of the day and my brake rotor that I had ordered was not the right one. What are we doing here, dude? Oh, that's cool. You know, he's got the bracket hanging. Yeah, I don't have a uh, rotor for this side, so we're gonna have to save this one uh, for Minana. As I mentioned earlier, when we started this video, there is some other work to be done on this particular truck. Uh, none of that's gonna happen today. So uh, I'm done with my side and the sun is long, so I am out of here. I have nothing more to offer you on this particular truck except for one cotter pin, key pin, split pin or whatever that I'm not going to put in just to just to get to you, just a wee little bit. So uh, anyway, all jokes aside, as always, I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video. I certainly hope you enjoyed this front end rebuild uh, part one on this 1999 Ford F-250 with a 5.4 four wheel drive. If you did enjoy this video, please feel free to let me know about that in the comment section down below. Do not forget to tap that like button while you're down there. And most importantly, have yourselves a fantastic day. See you guys in the next one. Again, thanks for watching. End of video, end of Ford, end of front end, end of transmission.